Hi, my name is Dan Fernbeck. I'm one of the co-founders of Druggerbot 3D, and we manufacture industrial grade 3D printers in Youngstown, Ohio. 3D printing is a fast growing manufacturing technology with the potential to disrupt the way engineers design, manufacturers produce, and businesses function. There are already 3D printers in laboratories, on shop floors, and even in households. Some believe that 3D printing will be bigger than the internet. Just how big of an impact will this technology have on manufacturing in the future though? Today, we're gonna to talk about some of the common myths surrounding 3D printing, as well as the career opportunities we expect to see in the years to come. First and foremost, 3D printing refers to the family of processes making physical objects from a three-dimensional digital model by adding layer on top of layer. This is why it's also referred to as additive manufacturing. Every 3D print starts with a 3D model. 3D models can be designed using CAD software like Fusion 360 or Tinkercad. They can be obtained from a 3D scan of a real life object, and they can be downloaded from certain websites. Those models are then loaded into a slicer where they're sliced into thousands of layers. And then each layer is converted into G code that can be communicated to the 3D printer. The G code commands the print to move in a certain positions at specific speeds, as well as where and how much material to apply. 3D printing is used every day in multiple industries under the sun, at least in some capacity. It's playing a role in how all of us travel by rail, sky, water, or pavement. It impacts how clinicians take care of their patients. It's used to build the systems that deliver critical resources like water and oil, and it was probably even used to help build your favorite toy. There are a handful of advantages that 3D printing offers over other manufacturing technologies, which makes it exciting and poses a disruption to how things are made. One of those, which is design freedom, enabled by the additive process. Because you are building parts layer by layer, you can create geometries that are literally impossible to make with other manufacturing processes. This improved design flexibility can be used to optimize the performance of a specific part. It allows designers to reduce the weight of a part without compromising strength or even take an entire assembly of parts and consolidate them into one single piece. Another benefit of 3D printing is the fact that you can make parts on demand. As we discussed, making parts with the 3D printer can be as simple as uploading a 3D model into your slicer, exporting your G-code to your printer, and pressing start. This has been a staple for folks to quickly iterate designs during new product development and drastically increases the speed in which companies can respond to market needs. You might have also realized that 3D printing doesn't require specific tooling like molding, casting, or even machining does. Tool list production supports a strategy revolving around mass customization where each and every part can be altered without significant penalty to time or cost. It also removes the need to buy tooling to start the production process, one of the most costly upfront investments in required for other manufacturing processes. So 3D printing is obviously going to be the way everything gets made in the future, right? Wrong. 3D printing is likely to gain more traction and have its place, but the future of manufacturing will still include many other manufacturing processes that are used today. Let's dive into a few more common myths about 3D printing. Let's start with an easy one. Myth number one, all 3D printers are the same. The truth is 3D printers differ based on the type of material being processed, like powders and filaments or commodity materials and performance materials and required reliability. We'll talk more about desktop and industrial 3D printers here in a second. So there are actually seven different types of 3D printing techniques recognized today and many contain multiple sub-techniques. Printers that make plastic parts by using light to cure photopolymers often fall under the VAT photopolymerization umbrella, including popular sub-techniques like SLA and DLP printing. Powder bed fusion, on the other hand, can make parts out of plastics, metals, or ceramics by melting and fusing powder material with a laser or electron beam. Binder jetting also makes parts from powder or sand only the process involves selectively depositing a binding agent onto the powder in a specific path, and then after the part, it's solidified through post-processing. 
Material jetting is a process that makes 3D objects by curing material that is jetted from an inkjet-like uh, head using UV light. Sheet lamination is a process where sheets or ribbon is cut out into specific shapes, replicating a full layer, and are placed on top of one another. They are then bound together through welding, heat, or adhesive. Direct energy deposition is primarily used for metal and creates parts by applying material directly onto the surface of another part, where it adheres to the underlying surface by applying energy from a laser, beam, or arc. And finally, there's material extrusion, one of the more prominent 3D printing techniques. This is where you find filament-based 3D printing, which you have probably seen, creating parts by drawing material through a nozzle and selectively depositing it on a predetermined path, and of course, making parts layer by layer. Now, you can also draw a distinction between printers based on their purpose. Will the printer be used for education or as a hobby? Or will teams be relying on the printer to help them accomplish the goals in the workforce? Typically, a desktop 3D printer refers to one that is primarily used in a less susceptible application. The standard accuracy is generally expected to be slightly worse than that of industrial systems, which are built to endure more demanding requirements. Industrial 3D printers may also be designed to process higher performing materials and are not compatible with desktop printers and can incorporate hardware or technology that increases the amount of work they can do in a given time. The increase does come with a price as industrial 3D printers can be more than 10 times the cost of their desktop companions. Myth number two, 3D printing is slow. In all fairness, 3D printing, uh, 3D printing apart rather, could take hours or even days. However, we have to define speed to accurately compare 3D printing against other manufacturing processes. Several innovations have been made in recent years to drastically increase the scalability of 3D printing. And while 3D printing cycle times may be slower than traditional processes, the lead times can be much faster. Cycle time refers to the time it takes to perform a single act of the process, like molding or casting <clears throat> or printing. Lead time captures the entire operational process, including the time it takes to perform all the steps between receiving an order and delivering a part. You have to take a holistic look at each process to make a fair comparison. For instance, let's take this plastic housing used in the production of an autonomous van. After the part design has been finalized, the company planning to injection mold the part has to spend time designing a tool and then building the tool before they can start production. 3D printing, being a toolless method, can start production right away. In the real world, that could potentially be a six to eight month head start for someone planning to use 3D printing for production. Even if it takes 48 hours to print this part, but only three minutes to injection mold it, a company using 3D printing could deliver the first 30 parts five months ahead of the company using injection molding. The bar for 3D printer scalability is also being raised. One way to do that is by increasing the speed to build each layer. At Juggerbot 3D, we've developed an extrusion process that can deposit materials up to 200 times faster than other 3D printers called fused granulate fabrication. Another way to increase scalability is by enabling more than one part to be built at a time. Innovations like the IDEX extruder can help operators double their output by running two extruder heads at the same time, getting twice the parts in the same cycle time. Okay, this next one's a big one. Myth number three, 3D printing is limited to prototyping. 3D printing has been used to make prototypes for more than 30 years. While it is a great tool for teams to rapidly produce early models of their designs, prototyping is really just the tip of the iceberg for 3D printing. In fact, many companies are already deploying 3D printing to do more than just prototypes. Take Franco Bicycles, a California-based manufacturer of bikes and e-bikes. In 2019, the Franco team introduced the world's first composite additive manufacturing bike frame, sporting a single frame design for their line of e-bikes and representing on-demand manufacturing of composite parts in volume. Large corporations are doing this too. The automotive giant BMW has been using 3D printing in all sorts of ways, making parts out of metals, plastics, and ceramics. 
including parts for their Roadster, as seen here, which has allowed BMW to make the car lighter and therefore quicker without compromising the safety of the driver. So where does 3D printing add value? As we stated, prototyping will always be a low-hanging fruit for 3D printing. And we just discussed how some companies have already taken 3D printing on to produce and use parts. Tooling is the third application where 3D printing can be applied, whether it be for production aids like quality gauges or work holding fixtures, or production tools like patterns for sand casting or molds for thermal forming. 3D printing can be used to make tooling at times in a cheaper, faster manner. So moving on to myth number four, 3D printing is for small parts. Many people seem to think that 3D printing can't make big parts, when the truth is many 3D printers have been introduced to the market, especially in the past five years, that can produce large parts or even make batch order quantities of many parts at the same time. In fact, the University of Maine is credited with owning the largest 3D printer in the world, which they use to perform research in collaboration with the United States Department of Energy and Department of Defense. Having travel distances of 100 feet long by 20 feet wide and 10 feet tall, University of Maine's printer has more than enough room to make a 25-foot boat and did so in just 70 hours. As impressive as that might be, boat making, uh, a boat-making 3D printer is probably a little bit of overkill for most projects, not to mention out of most companies' budgets. Along with the onset of large-scale printers in the recent past, a number of medium format machines have also been offered to better suit a wider range of manufacturers. This is an area where Juggerbot 3D shines. The standard build volume of our machines comes in at four feet long, three feet wide, and four feet tall. Not enough to build a boat, but still plenty of room to make the furniture you use in class. So our final myth of the day, we need to talk about the statement you probably have heard at some point in time. 3D printing can make anything. Yes, 3D printing offers unique design freedom. Yes, 3D printing is a very agile manufacturing technology. No, 3D printing cannot make everything. As a matter of fact, there are a number of times when 3D printing can be used to perform a specific job, but probably shouldn't be, as the different tool, or rather as a different tool, would be better suited. Constraints to the process and performance of 3D printed parts need to be carefully considered when implementing for industrial applications especially. So one thing you really need to be cautious of when using 3D printing is that most 3D printed parts demonstrate anisotropic properties. That means that 3D printed parts will have different mechanical properties like strength in one direction versus the other because of the additive process. The weakest point of the 3D printer part will generally be the Z direction, which is dictated by the strength of the bond between each layer, while the strength of the XY direction is going to be higher, benefiting from the continuous stream of material making each layer. This is something you can address with the orientation of your print, but does not go away entirely for most 3D printing techniques. Another key element to consider with 3D printing is volume. Let's take the plastic housing scenario we talked about earlier. Using the information we reviewed regarding cycle time and lead time, the injection molding operation could produce 3,120 more units in a 12-month span, despite starting production seven months after the 3D printing operation. Now, these are just guesstimated values, but as you can see, a company would be better fit with a traditional process like injection molding, where they have higher volumes demanded over a stretch of time. So we, and what did we learn is the truth? Now, there are many different types of 3D printing, which can be broken down into one of the seven different types, as well as by their purpose. Remember, we talked about desktop versus industrial 3D printing characteristics. Number two, 3D printing can be a very time effective method of production. We have to consider the holistic production process to accurately compare the time. And we also discussed how 3D printing innovations are making the technology more scalable. Number three, despite popular belief, 3D printing can be used for much more than prototyping. Many companies like Frankel Bicycles and BMW already found ways to benefit from 3D printing in the production and of tooling and end use parts. Number four, 3D printing can be used to produce small and large, and as we discussed, medium desk size parts. 
using systems like ours at Juggerbot 3D. And number five, you have to carefully consider your application requirements when choosing which tool to use. And not everything should be 3D printed. Now that we've unveiled those truths, let's talk a little bit about the future career opportunities in the 3D printing space. Being that the technology is projected to grow continually at a strong rate, it's worth keeping an eye out for those of you interested in manufacturing. As 3D printing continues to evolve and finds its way into more labs and onto shop floors, there will be a growing demand for a wide range of engineering talent, including software engineers to develop applications for 3D printing and associated tools, mechanical and electrical engineers, both to design the equipment as well as utilize the equipment, manufacturing engineers to understand where 3D printing best fits within a company's process, and materials engineers to help develop new materials that meet the needs of 3D printing applications. We also believe that there will be a big opportunity for skilled tradesmen too. Just as CNC machines are operated by highly trained machinists, industrial 3D printers will require operators with a firm understanding of the technology to reliably make good products. We'll also need service technicians who have a strong competency in how the machines function and can support manufacturers with maintenance needs. There will also be a wave of opportunity to support the adoption of 3D printing from a commercial front. Finance, sales, and marketing professionals will best be equipped to do their work if they understand the features of, and benefits of the technology. Regardless of the, of the position, the future of 3D printing is bright and will hold a lot of opportunities for those who embrace it. So that's all I have for today. Again, my name is Dan Fernbeck, and you can reach me at the information provided on the slide here if you have any questions. I want to thank you for your time.